Welcome to the 8Push Dig. Our topic this time is to examine the massive growth of cities, or urbanization, during the Gilded Age. In the late 19th century, the massive industrial economic growth was accompanied by a massive migration to urban areas where the manufacturing centers operated. The big historical picture we need to understand is that industrialization led to both international and internal migration, and it's greatly increased urban populations, which created demographic change. Also, this fostered the growth of a new type of urban culture, distinct from rural culture. Migration into cities came from every direction. People left failing farms and headed to the cities. Black families escaped the poverty and terror of the South and took steady employment in factories. Immigrants fled poverty, famine, and violence in Southern and Eastern Europe, as well as from China. Americans referred to Irish and German immigrants as the, quote, old immigrants because they more easily blended into American society in the mid-1800s. The immigrants in the late 1800s were referred to as the new immigrants, People from places like Italy, Greece, Russia, China, they were viewed with contempt by the xenophobic nativists. In all of the cities, neighborhoods based on particular ethnicities were created. We call these ethnic neighborhoods. They provided new cultural opportunities for city dwellers, and inside of these ethnic neighborhoods, people could hold on to their home cultures and languages. Examples include Little Italy's and Chinatowns in every major city. The ugly tradition of nativism returned in the Gilded Age and fueled violence against new immigrants. The U.S.'s first major immigration restriction was passed in this era, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. Urbanization led to other significant social changes as well. One is the rise of a managerial middle class. Corporations need for managers. Corporations need for managers and clerical workers, as well as increased access to education, fostered the growth of a distinctive middle class, which served as a social control to the expanding working class. Also, growing amount of leisure time also helped expand consumer culture in cities as workers now had time off with paychecks and money in their pockets to spend. Since wealth, services, and power were so unequally distributed in big cities, political machines thrived. They provided services and jobs in immigrant communities in exchange for votes, what we call the politics of patronage. The machines, run by bosses like William Tweed and Tammany Hall in New York City, engaged in graft, and other forms of political corruption. The working class, also known as the industrial proletariat, grew in numbers and in diversity. In this era, workers were trying to build solidarity and create labor unions. Management sought to exploit this division in diversity, hoping that English-speaking workers would not organize with non-English-speaking workers. Also, the numbers of children employed in factories and in mines also increased. Finally, let's reflect on four big changes due to urbanization during the Gilded Age. Factory labor was dangerous and conditions were harsh. However, wages were higher in the United States, which attracted tens of thousands of immigrants to live and work in urban areas. Immigrants lived in crowded tenements in ethnic neighborhoods in these new cities. The cities grew too fast, and municipal governments provided few services to immigrants and city dwellers. This situation led to the rise of the politics of patronage, also known as political machines and bosses. Social Darwinism influenced how Americans viewed different races and led to a nativist anti-immigrant resurgence.